Hi everyone, I'm News Now from Fox's Rain Augustine and with me this morning I have Dr. Aubrey Jewett, political science professor at the University of Central Florida. Hi Dr. Jewett. Hi Rain, thanks for having me on with you. Thank you so much. So today we're talking about something that may not be on the minds of voters and that's what to wear when you actually show up to vote. Dr. Jewett, what can you tell me about dress codes at polling locations? Well, yeah, it's really an interesting topic across the 50 states. There are about 20 states that restrict what you can wear into a polling place. And basically what those states say is that you cannot wear electioneering paraphernalia. So you couldn't wear a hat that had a candidate's name or a button or a t-shirt that had a candidate's name or maybe an issue is on the ballot in your state. You're not supposed to wear anything that would be considered electioneering uh, in that state. So anything that was appearing on the ballot in that particular election, you shouldn't have clothing or buttons or anything like that. But that's only about 20 states. The other states allow more things. So you have to, it depends on what state you live in. For instance, some of the, there's about 20 states that have this. So some of the bigger states would be California, New York, uh, Texas, uh, and then they have some small states like Delaware and Maine, right? But anyways, there are a number of states that do have these restrictions. And so you should, as a voter, figure out if your state is one of them, if you plan on voting in person. Now, why do you think some of these states have cer certain restrictions in place? Well, the, the thought behind it is that they do not want campaigning in the polling place. They basically say once people come to the polling place, they should have peace and quiet. They should not feel any more coercion, uh, no arm twisting. People should just be able to vote who they want to vote for without any more pressure. And so that's kind of the noble idea behind this. While only 20 states have specific prohibitions about what you can wear into the polling place, every state, I think, I believe it's all 50, have rules about no campaigning near the polling place. So most states have, a, have basically drawn a line that says, okay, no, no, no campaign signs or active campaigning within 50 feet or 100 feet or 200 feet of the polling place. And again, the thought is you don't want voters to be harassed. You want people to be able to show up, vote in peace, vote for who they want to vote for without unnecessary intimidation. And so the states that have decided to also ban particular kinds of clothing, messages, ball caps, buttons, things like that, they're just taking that idea one step further and saying, okay, not only do we not want any active campaigning or campaign signs, but in the polling place, we don't want people to wear things that might intimidate or try to uh, convince a voter to vote other than they would. So the time for that is before they walk into the polling place. But once you're there, it's supposed to be peaceful and, and serene, and you should just be able to vote who you want for without a lot of pressure. Now, let's say a voter does show up to their polling locations with political attire in one of the states that has restrictions. What could happen? Well, they could be asked to uh, cover up before they're allowed to vote, or they might be asked to, if it's something simple like a button, they just might be asked to remove it or a hat, they might be asked to remove, but they could be refused um, voting if they do not comply. In some of these states, that's the penalty. I mean, w once you comply, then you can come back in and vote, but they can, they can disallow you from voting right then if you are not complying with the rules. Uh, as enforced by the elections officials at each of the local polling places. And of course, that's one of the problems is that the enforcement is left up to the local officials at each local polling place. And of course, many of those people are just volunteers. And a lot of times they're senior citizens who just try to do their civic duty and help out. But then they're responsible for trying to determine whether or not you have violated this, you know, whether your ball cap or your t-shirt says something that it shouldn't say. Right, so could you give me any examples historically where restrictions like this were set in place and maybe challenged? Well, yeah, there was a, a case in uh, Minnesota where this was challenged. Uh, a voter uh, wore a button, if I remember, or a t-shirt that said, please ID me. 
and you know, as a voter, because he thought strongly that uh, we should make sure we know who is voting. So he was in favor of voter ID laws. Well, the local officials uh, at his polling place said that he couldn't vote unless he took off that T-shirt or button, whatever it was. And in the end, he sued, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court. And in this particular case, and it was just settled in the last year or two, in this particular case, the U.S. Supreme Court actually ruled against the state and for the voter. But the reason was this. They said, look, some states have laws against uh, electioneering apparel that are okay because they're very specific and it's very clear as to what you can and cannot wear. Minnesota's at the time was much broader and basically said you can't wear anything political. Well, gosh, I mean, that covers a whole lot of ground when you say anything political. And so the U.S. Supreme Court, and I think it was unanimous, it was eight to one or nine to oh, they basically said, look, while we definitely agree we want polling places to be peaceful and that people shouldn't be intimidated, people should not have to totally give up their right to free speech just to go vote. And so if somebody's wearing something that's generically political, that's okay. So what they told Minnesota in that case was, you can have a law, but it needs to be a lot more precise and specific. And they, they, they cited like California as a state that had a very specific law. And with California's law, it says that basically you can't wear anything that displays a candidate's name or likeness or logo. That includes things like buttons, hats, pens, pencils, stickers, t-shirts, etc. So California's law is very specific. It only applies to the candidates and the issues that are on that particular ballot, not to the more general political things. And in the Minnesota case, that was their problem. They had crafted a very broad law that the floor that the US Supreme Court said was violating people's right to First Amendment free speech. And so um, they overturned that law and Minnesota had to go back to the drawing board and they have, by the way, and they now have a more specific law. Very important information for voters to know. Dr. Jewett, what advice can you offer voters as this does vary state by state? Yeah, my best advice is first, if, just figure out if you're gonna vote in person or not. If you're voting by mail, then you don't have to worry about this. You can be in your pajamas or whatever you want. Um, but if you're gonna vote in person, either early or on election day, then you should find out if your state has rules about wearing political attire. Now, of course, if you don't own any political attire and you're not worried, you don't wear it anyway, of course you don't have to worry about it, right? Because who, you know, if you don't nor if you don't own any t-shirts or buttons or hats, you you won't run afoul of the law accidentally. You'll be fine. But if you are a person that's politically active and likes to wear uh, buttons and, and ball caps uh, or t-shirts or whatever, then you really should look up and, and find your state and see if it does have rules against this. And it should be pretty easy with the with Googling, et cetera, that you should be able to just type in your state and, in, and type in apparel restrictions at polling place or something like that. And you should be able to quickly figure it out. Okay, Dr. Jewett, thank you so much for talking with me this evening. Absolutely, it's been great talking with you, Rain. All right.